Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. I'm your host, Andrew Spawn, and with me today is the incredible Nick Robes. How's it going, sir? The incredible edible egg. I am <laughs> phenomenal. I've had my eggs, and I'm ready to dive in headfirst. Wonderful. I'm so ready. And, and what are we going to be diving into this day, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know. I was like trying to think of, uh, something that would just kind of get weird. And I, and I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go yeah. and I'm not entirely sure how we're going to attack it. I'm very interested to find out like what avenues we start going down, but we are going to do, uh, Johnson and Johnson, the theme park. Yes. Johnson and Johnson, the family theme park. Um, <laughs> It, I, I'm very intrigued and confused and excited. I'm curious about how much uh, celebration, critique, sarcasm, uh, seriousness is going to be involved here. I think it'll be a, a weird quilt of different types of fibers. But, uh, you know, that's what Johnson & Johnson is, and that's what we all know and love about it. Right. Yeah. What we all know about Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, Johnson and Johnson. You mean the family company? <laughs> right. Obviously. We're familiar with their work. They've been around for 125 years. It's a, it's a pretty serious institution. Um, right. I do think one of the core tenants that we need to start with the, with the theme park is one of the, the main parts of the company and like why they were founded. It was, um, I wrote this down because it's important. They wanted to have... Okay. Oh, man, where is it? They wanted to focus on relieving pain and suffering, which I think is a very innovative idea for a theme park where most theme parks are more about the pain and suffering or, you know, pointing out that you'll never truly be happy and that pain is a part of life. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, you know, I feel that every time I go to Disney World. Don't we all? You know, that's why oh, lines Life is suffering. <laughs> it's very Buddhist. It is. No, you're right. So there's a lot of philosophical... Um, angles of theme parks that we haven't yet discussed on this show but today might be the day <laughs> <laughs> let's get weird you know you walk into disney and it says here you leave behind uh reality or whatever and you enter the world of tomorrow fantasy and adventure there is a credo for Johnson and Johnson that is like four paragraphs long. And I want the whole thing yes. to just be a giant plaque that you walk under. Are you going to recite this to us? Yeah, let's go for the whole thing. Okay, let's see how long I can make it before both of us get bored. <laughs> we believe our first responsibility is to the... <laughs> Wait, no, this needs a more 60s vibe. <clears throat> yes, more Disney World. Disneyland. Yeah. We believe our first responsibility is to the doctors, nurses, and patients, to mothers and fathers, and all others who use our products and services. In meeting their needs, everything we do must be of high quality. We must constantly strive to reduce our costs in order to maintain reasonable prices. Customers' orders must be serviced promptly and accurately. Our supplies and distributors must have an opportunity to make a fair profit. We are responsible to our employees. It keeps going. I got bored. Um, oh, you did. You were doing so great, though. I was. I was picturing it. You know, engraved on this gigantic, like so like small that you brass. can't even read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the. Uh, did you ever see um, Joe versus the volcano? No. No, it's a Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan movie from like the late '80s, I think. Mm-hmm. And so he works for a medical supply company that uh not to go into it too hardcore but they the the opening is insanely stylized like the company is like this like really like grimy almost dickensian factory <laughs> of just like grime and like everybody's walking through the mud to get to it at one point like <laughs> a dude like steps on a flower <laughs> I want like the more glitzy version of that. Like, th like I want this place to look like a little bit like Rapture from uh, Bioshock. <laughs> I like that idea. I get that vibe. Like, I think that whenever you get into that kind of, I don't know, late nineteenth century uh, business like 
progressive Art business Deco. ideas. Yeah, it's like very idealistic and like they're big innovators at the time mm-hmm. and they probably did legitimate good, but looking back at it it's kind of very like quaint and kind of strange. Like um I have a book I right there but I can't quite reach it. But anyway, I have this book that's like um it's from a business school in like 1910 and like the first chapter is about like how to write capital letters and like it's like what that's this was important back then like i mean i get hand handwriting is important and stuff but it's like how here's, to read ticker tape <laughs> it's like here's a reminder on how to communicate professionally and it just shows the alphabet in all caps it's like draw along the you know it's it's like wow it was so basic back then but you know it kind of sets a foundation for for legitimate progress and like innovations and it's just kind of a weird thing to look back at because it seems so like twisting the mustache and like kind of i don't know monopoly guy monopoly guy yeah that whole era and like rockefeller it, carnegie like yeah yeah basically dreamers of the past seem a lot more uh diabolical than i think dreamers of the present <laughs> maybe that's the lens of history making it seem a little bit sketchier right well because it was about like progress at any like at any kind of uh cost it was like you know i mean the the point of capitalism is competition and anytime you get into these huge corporations like johnson and johnson it always seems like that's the subtext of like you know even in this credo how do we bring down cost for the consumer right you know? <laughs> yeah totally true and like the, i mean they had some some cool innovations for the time like a big part of it was they had a service to customers and employees and community before their corporate stakeholders. But Hmm. if you don't give money to the corporate stakeholders, then you can't make money yourself and the business is going to shut down. So it's kind of like those kind of have to be rearranged in reality in a way, or at least, you know, put your best people on making sure the corporate stakeholders are, are, uh, you know, satisfied. And then, you know, these people can work with like the community and these people can work for the customer, but we really need to make that bottom line work. And for this right. to be our, our stated structure, we really got to make sure all four of those are hit really hard so that that fourth one, which is the one that honestly matters as far as the longevity of the company, is also fully satisfied. So, It's a weird balancing act. Yeah. It's inherently going to look a little bit evil, I think. Anytime you have add the word corporation to the end of your name, you know, when you're like a scrappy little upstart, everyone's on mm-hmm. your side. But once you've achieved huge world-dominating success and you want to keep that... You're the bad guy. Yeah, GM or uh-huh. any of those places. Right. Right. Once, um, once you're not the underdog, I don't like you as much. You're more of a, an overdog. And, you know, overdogs yeah, aren't... The Red Sox, you know. <laughs> there you go. So mainstream, too. So you lose that cool punk aesthetic of a startup. You know, you become the man. Yeah. Uh, uh, Venmo gets bought out by PayPal. We all get it. There's such sellouts. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Venmo used to be about, you know, sending money to people. It was so grassroots, man. So I think one of the main things people would go to the theme park for is that everyone loves sterile surgery, you know? And <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so the guy who started it, right? Uh, look, uh, Robert Wood inspired Johnson. Inspired by a speech by antiseptic advocate Joseph Lister. Oh, Robert yeah. Wood Johnson joined his brother James Wood Johnson. His brothers, there's three of them? Holy there's crap. three Johnsons, and the name is Johnson & Johnson. I'm like, which one got left out? Or maybe Two that was an inside married. joke. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to create a line of use of surgical dressing, I think it would be the greatest thing is you immediately walk into this giant building, there's the, you know, credo up top, and then you have to wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, all jokes aside, this has to be an extremely sterile place. Extremely um, sterile, uh, safe um yes kind of is the whole thing indoors it could be well that way we can avoid the kind of pain and suffering caused by the sun which is one of the main downsides to a traditional theme park true the lines and the sun um and the smell of sunscreen is just awful you think so well in small doses it can be good but yeah i guess you're right on mass if it's on you know on thousands of people wedged together it gets to be a little Little Add rough. in a little B.O. I like it as a solo act, but not as part of the whole chorus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, <laughs> liked, you liked the early stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the singer-songwriter styles of yeah. uh, sunscreen. <laughs> when sunscreen <laughs> went electric, I was out. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening right now? Uh, okay. 
the I think we need to have walk around mascot characters of Ooh. all of these early, <clears throat> you know, the wood the. Why do they all have Wood as their middle name? But all the Johnson brothers need to have, you know, big head mascot characters. Mm. And, yeah, just all the pioneers of kind of germ theory and serial surgery get to... Everyone can go around and get their autographs and give them a hug, and it'll be lovely. I feel like there's a weird, uh, like, uh, (laughs) duality in this park between, like, fun and education. Yeah, and it should definitely prioritize the education. Well, safety, cleanliness, and then education and then fun maybe yeah i mean it's the uh it's the dichotomy in those like really crappy or awesome depending on uh, how you choose to view them like educational videos that like weren't bill nye but like wanted to be bill nye that your science teacher would put on and it would be like look how crazy this is (laughs) but then it's just like Clo- sodium chloride or salt is a you know the valence electrons are going to move around and then you're kind of like yeah and then it's just like explosion <laughs> when they're trying to ape bill nye but they don't really know how it works and it's we're trying to reverse engineer this thing how's this guy function here how's this this is entertaining to kids all right we can do that yeah like the, like there's a combination of like you're on a roller coaster but you're also learning the uh, chemical makeup of acetaminophen you know right right it's <laughs> It's going to be a weird theme park, and I don't know who would ever go here, <laughs> except for maybe us. Yeah, me. <laughs> uh, so, like, uh, what what if it's, um, what if it, so, similar to Disney's Tomorrowland, like, originally, yeah. like, how it was all, like, technology and life, and this is how we're going to make, build a better tomorrow. Like, all, like, you know, the Monsanto ride and stuff like right. that. Right. I feel like that's this whole park. Yeah. What if these self-contained buildings with like, uh, not monorails, but progressively like more technological modes of transportation yeah. to get in between. So it's like uh, uh, medical stuff of yesteryear, today, and tomorrow. I think that makes sense. I mean, they literally have a big, you know, uh, contribution to all three of those things like Mm. some people i think are more interested in the history and then some people are more interested in the future so i'm down with that that's totally legitimate um a that the part where um robert wood johnson heard that like lecture that kind of changed the course of his you know medical production career whatever was at the 1876 world's fair so having a reproduction of that could bring some like legitimately entertaining things to this theme park where it's not purely about medical products but it's like just is that a dark ride i don't know it could be like just an open air like a reproduction kind of thing or like uh it's like uh you get inside like a pill and you're like (laughs) you're carried through this like history of like uh at the world's fair and there's like you know the oscilloscope or whatever i don't know what was that the 1886 one yeah it wasn't um (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was. I haven't. I haven't seen the photographs. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, it's like taking you through it. It's like there's like an animatronic of him, like like looking over and seeing like you know the the people gathered around for some dude talking, and then there's like you stop at the lecture, and he's like, "Cleanliness is godliness," <laughs> and everyone's like, <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> "There's like a woman heretic." Who, like, yeah, takes off her hat. <laughs> No, that's great. I like that. And the the idea of a pill-shaped ride vehicle is incredible, and I think we should use that throughout the park. Like, that's a cool iconography, you know what I mean? It's. Mm-hmm. I think that's why um, Akira was such a popular film, is just that, that pill logo is super cool on the back yeah. of yeah, the jacket. It, it was, like, so evocative, and you had no idea what the hell it meant. <laughs> just like Johnson & Johnson, you know? It's mm-hmm. like... It's endlessly attractive, and I can't explain why. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> why why uh, are you part of all of my life, Johnson & Johnson? You're like GE, but weirder. <laughs> yeah, but more internal. Um, yeah, in you me. You go in, into me, yeah. Yeah, which I think should be a big theme of the theme park. Oh, mm. at, wait, maybe literally, though. That was a joke, but possibly we could go an Osmosis Jones kind of route where uh, there are attractions where you go inside the human body to help uh, Chucky get his watermelon seed out or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever medical people would do in the future. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, the, this is how we're helping you on the inside. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Uh, uh, it's called. Um, oh my God. Okay. Obviously, inner space is already taken. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like journey is overused. Internal affairs. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the Department of Internal <laughs> Affairs. Yes. Oh man. And that could part. could definitely be in the kind of future area. And another thing that would be kind of interesting and dark. And I'm curious, you know, why Johnson and Johnson came to us with to design this theme park for them because it's going to probably go some weird places. But hopefully they approve it all. We'll see. Um, but they kind of the whole surgical. Uh, or sterile surgery thing made surgery. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just like a last ditch effort of like, this guy's probably going to die. So let me at least cut him open and see if something good happens. It was mm. more like, we know what we're doing and this will not kill this guy probably. So we should just go ahead and take the bullet out. Like, I don't know. It became not so much a last ditch effort and it's kind of mo- moved more and more towards you can get surgery. If you want to, we can do surgery 10 times a year. It doesn't make a big difference. It's pretty safe. So in the future, maybe it's just like, fully optional surgeries that everyone's getting just because why not there can be like a uh if there's there could be like a giant version of operation Uh (laughs) uh-huh so like but like instead of the cheesy operation like like you have uh you know however it would be designed there's like a giant uh screen oh my gosh what if you are like on like a mech right Uh and you have to like uh you have like these two arms and you have to like control like uh doing lasik eye surgery on like a giant iris so you're like peeling back and like lasering it (laughs) i like that idea because i do think that might be the future is you know shrinking down your doctors so they can get more up close and personal Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so the Department like, of Internal Affairs would actually be a pretty cool part of the theme park, honestly. And you yeah. have that whole, like, there's kind of a genre of video games that's like surgical simulators, like things that evolved from Operation, more or less, where you're, like, slicing things and, so, you know, sewing stu- sutures and all that stuff. Like, Puzzles and things yeah, like that. Yeah. We could totally have a whole area where you're you're learning how to perform <laughs> sterile surgery. Yeah, Ooh. and somehow... <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Uh, I know. Somehow it's like uh, it's an entertaining version of what really happens. Yeah. But then again, just because this is a corporate theme park doesn't mean we have to like abide by their beliefs. You know, people, there's alternative beliefs and we want to have everyone be able to express their own opinion. So we could have. Here we go again. We, <laughs> we could have a non, <laughs> non-sterile surgery area as well. Just are there so you people can who are see... into dirty surgery? Yes. I mean, you know, like. I don't know, people who don't want to get vaccines, for example. Like, maybe there's something offensive about having uh, sterile surgery performed on you, and you'd rather go the the old-fashioned way. It's like the uh, Nocturne Alley in, like, (laughs) Wizarding World of Harry Potter. It's like the dirty surgery in the back. Yeah, dirty (laughs) surgery. Yeah, there's like a 21 and up part of the theme park where you can do dirty <laughs> dirty surgeries. But yeah, I like the idea of the Department of Internal Affairs. And you're like, you know, there can be like a shrink down ride where you're like going in. There can be like, you know, um, there could be uh, like a fun little like hall, th- a hall of speaking uh, impl- implements. Whoa. So it's like, hi, I'm the scapel. I was I was born in 1225 when <laughs> the, uh, B- BC when Thermonius first cut open a dude and was like, well, this helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the history of surgery, and you've got like a spa where you can get like a nice leech treatment and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a there's a talking version of like you know the robots that they have where like some dudes in like you know uh, Croatia operating on like a kid in California with this like crazy ass like monitor head and like the little instruments. Yeah, I mean that's a real thing. Like the long distance yeah. surgeries, especially for really specialized things. It's like there's ten guys in the world who can do the surgery, and they all live twenty hours away from here. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just gonna Skype in and uh, <laughs> handle this thing remotely. <laughs> Let's hope the internet doesn't glitch out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> buffering. Buffering. Oh, man. No! Yeah. Wow. 
There you go. That's definitely mm. uh, something that could happen. I like including the kind of history. It's kind of uh, morbid, and also a lot of people are really interested in that kind of thing, just those sort of historical oddities. And there seems to be a weird subset of people, not weird, but unique subset of people who are really into you know, sur- historical surgery stuff. So we have a place for them. Yeah, it's like the same as people who like aren't, you know, psychologists who own a copy of the DSM or, you yeah, know. Yeah, right. Oh, totally normal. We all have our things. Yeah. I think um, in the land of tomorrow, whatever that uh, obviously is not called Tomorrowland, uh, you could have a cool eatery. Mm-hmm. And it's... Uh, it seems like kind of a bummer to have it also like be telling you about nutrition. Like at, you're like, I am starving. I would love a hamburger. <laughs> They're like, you know what you really need to be nutritious? This carrot. Screw you. <laughs> I'm hungry. You could. I like that idea a lot. You could do kind of an upscale sort of. Uh, oh man, what's the word? Gourmet type area, but everything is different vitamins. Like <laughs> they're mm-hmm. differently seasoned. You get like this fancy plate with the tiny little portions, but it's actually just like three different si- three different colors of pills, and it's like here's your first course. And I guess it, it's a little Willy Wonka ish, but it could actually be like legitimate vitamins for your body. Yeah, and, but like as you pick them up, uh, it's a it's a like a smart tray, mm-hmm. and it gives you like a little like animated readout of like Ooh. here's what this will do for you, and yeah. like this is why this is good, and and you have to put in information so that it's tailored for you. Mm-hmm. So it'll be like, you know, I mean, there's stuff like the blood type diets and all this kind of stuff. Right. And it can be like, so because you are, you know, a, a 35-year-old male, uh, a negative blood type, all this kind of stuff, like you need, you and you have an iron deficiency and all this kind of crap. It like reads wow. it out to you and is like, this is how you, you know, go about this. And this so, is how we can do this in the future. This is how Johnson & Johnson is striving to take away your pain. Exactly. And so maybe do you have to do like a, take a blood draw when you first enter the park? Or is that the price of admission is like, a pint of blood or something and then they this can run the some tests of the park right <laughs> that's how they make <laughs> they their money yeah they also have like a giant uh like uh database of like dna from like everybody who comes in building an army of clones like that's the uh, <laughs> the other thing in the future is like johnson and john the dark side of johnson and johnson's future <laughs> Oh, this is man. the movie that we're writing. It's like you're in the park and like all of a sudden you like kind of look over and you think you see yourself and you're like, what is that? <laughs> and like, you know, like, you know, p- people like rush over and like put up plants in front of you yeah. and you're like, w- I thought I saw it. They're like, no, no, no. We're taking away people's pain. <laughs> wow. I like that. That's a cool dark version of this where <laughs> it's actually an extremely unpopular theme park because they do all this weird stuff there, but it's full of clones of people who have been there in the past and aren't there anymore. So it's like, it seems like it's well populated and everyone's running around smiling, but it's actually, there's only four actual visitors to the park today and you're one of them. This is a doctor who episode. Yeah. Oh, totally true. (laughs) Oh man. The things, when I first said this, the things that popped into my head were like, uh, it felt very like Rocco's modern life to me. I get that. Cause like, 90s Nickelodeon especially had this sort of ironic um it was like a big rebellious um undertone and punk rock punk rock yeah absolutely you can and the would, creators do whatever they want to do and Nickelodeon and corporate's would, not going to stop them well right and it would make fun of sort of corporate America quite oh, yeah. frequently like you think of like a uh, Pete and Pete and everything was like Kreb Kreb Star or whatever mm-hmm. uh, and it was like the corporation that made everything uh, and then Rocco's Modern Life I feel like it was always like you know the vacuum cleaner that eats his house and stuff like that and it would be like made by vacuum suck <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I really uh, do like the kind of <laughs> I don't know. There's some lack of reverence. Is that what yes, I was trying to say? That's pretty good. I think that's what you were after. Irreverence. <laughs> Irreverence. Yeah. And there is there. something kind of interesting and like, I don't know. Postmodern sounds a little pretentious, but but you're right. It but is. saying like hipster it's sounds humble. a little insulting. So it's somewhere in between there where it's like, it's kind of cool to wear like a Harley Davidson t-shirt, even though it's like, clearly that's not really my vibe or like how people always have like Megadeth shirts on. And it's like, I've never listened to Megadeth, but you know, everyone wears these shirts. It's kind of like, is this ironic or are you just doing it because it's like a commentary on what's popular or 
Yeah, I don't right. understand it exactly, but it's kind of cool to like do those things and like use a brand for your own purposes. An important early work of Johnson & Johnson was the book Modern Methods of Antiseptic Wound Treatment. I think making a film or a, a play adaptation of that would be really boring, <laughs> but fun. Oh my god, an improv group? <laughs> oh! <laughs> There's an improv, like, dinner show based on, like, antiseptic wound treatment? Yes. And, you know, there... Can I have a suggestion of an injury that you have received in your life? Broke my toe. No, it has to be some kind of something where there's blood. <laughs> scrape my knee on a bike. All right, I heard scrape my knee on a bike. Here we go. <laughs> the the corporate planning behind this is like, you know that one comedy actor who's like on Community and stuff, and he used to be like a doctor. Maybe like I think all doctors are funny. Let's just get four more doctors and put them on stage, and it'll be hilarious. They can bring their medical expertise and their lab coats. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's going to be so funny. It's branded as, like, the Ken Jeong. Like, <laughs> uh, Ken KJ, J and J. Oh, there you go. Improv antiseptic uh, uh, theater experience. <laughs> Honestly, if we bring him in as, like, uh, some kind of, you know, specialist to help us kind of plan out the park, I think that could be a big, that's a really good get for us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Ken the, Jeong was in the planning the processes. Yeah, exactly. And here he is. Bring him out. <laughs> He's got a five-minute set on uh, sterile surgery. He's got a tight five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's good. Oh, uh, did, were they? Oh, no, I'm thinking of Gerber. I was thinking of baby food. No, but they do like baby stuff, they right? They do baby stuff. They, they innovated the baby products uh you know, genre as far as modern audience is concerned with their baby powder, um, which I think would make a really fun attraction in and of itself. Um, yeah, but it's super sexist. It's all like, <laughs> and the women taking care of the babies. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Get out of here, guys. You got to go to work. <laughs> the good news is we can get away with these really backwards uh, viewpoints that we all have here at corporate by putting it in a historical part of, of the uh, theme park. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm not saying that. It's just how it was back then. Right, it's know? in quotation marks, and whether or not we truly believe it doesn't matter because it's in quotation marks. Look, we get it. All these doctors are white. <laughs> We're not saying that. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there's some uh, some power dynamics there. There's some interesting stuff going on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All these doctors are dudes, but we're not. the Like, it was just, that's the way that it. <laughs> I wonder if doing, like, a uh, kind of a, a playground that's just covered in baby powder, would that be fun or just really weird? Because it'd be very slippery. Yeah. You know, it's. Yeah. But I think it'd be you kind of pleasant. Those slides really fast. Yeah, you get it into all your crevices when you're done, but it's way better than having like sand in your crack. Like I'd rather That's have baby true. powder all on me and stuff. Yeah, is is uh how much baby powder would you need as like a safety <laughs> layer? You know how like uh I mean when I was kids it was like concrete, but now they have like rubber Yeah. Like, fractured rubber stuff underneath the playgrounds where right. it was just like a layer of baby powder. I like that. It makes it makes your wipeouts look a lot cooler because there's a big flume of baby powder. <laughs> and did they ever market that to adults? Because I think man powder would be pretty cool too. <laughs> Can't call it man powder. <laughs> we could have an area that's kind of uh, you know product testing or getting like market data on. What are your thoughts on these new exciting Johnson and Johnson products? You know, man man powder and. I don't know, other things. All I can see is the focus group sitting there in horror as some dude is like, what? I'm just saying white powder. <laughs> That's literally what it is. <laughs> it's white powder. <laughs> Stop saying it. What? White powder? It's just white powder. We're trying to broaden the appeal here. It's not just for babies. <laughs> babies are one of our lowest uh, buying demographics anyway. They can't even read most of them. So we're just making it more generic. <laughs> I like the idea of like the uh, roller coaster that's just a roller coaster, but like they throw a name on it for no for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, 
the FDA uh, red tape roller. And it's like, you know, all the things are like, <laughs> there's stuff going over the roller coaster that's like, um, uh, uh, regulations on um cortisol uh, uh inclusion and it's like you're loop de looping around the, the the red tape oh my gosh that's great like it, it's set up like you're going to like be stopped by it but you just sw- swerve at the last second and go around <laughs> it yeah bypassing all these and then that in the the future land there's you know the the government that's ruled by Johnson and Johnson it's this huge <laughs> monolithic thing that's taken over government it's and... always implied but never explicitly <laughs> said right. you you see it you zoom in on a shot of um one of the films that's set in the future and you see someone's dollar and it has you know a picture of uh, robert wood johnson instead of george washington on the dollar <laughs> whoa man and then someone looks at the, at the and is like ding <laughs> <laughs> this message brought to you by johnson and johnson a family oh, government. Cool. <laughs> For um, other attractions, as far as like specific, I think doing like roller coasters based on specific products would be interesting, or you know, not necessarily roller coasters, but mm. some kind of thing. Um, <laughs> some kind of thing. No, wow. no, I got you. Um, yeah. Well, their first Ride. commercial product was called Zon Weiss, which was a white uh, tooth cream for you know making your teeth cleaner or whatever. And mm. I was thinking some kind of one of those foam type attractions, either a roller coaster that goes through like a foam thingy or just kind of have it like a our slime substitute. We just douse people in various medical goos because that's always fun. What what if what if it's uh, it's like a, a game show almost where you have to put on the tooth outfit? Oh, yeah. And then uh, it's like uh, you're put together with like four different people and you have to get like the combination right and then pull the thing and then it like douses you and either you turned yellow or white. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So There's you all... don't get necessarily messy, the tooth outfit, does, yeah. but you get the you get a, you get a contact messiness. <laughs> contact high. There's a lot of room for for, you know, Nickelodeon games and sports types things in here. And like those little trivia shows where it's like if you get it wrong, you're getting squirted or you're getting dropped in the you know, the steam sterilization vents are being released and you're getting fully sterilized from the bottom <laughs> up. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of fun little punishments and places to incorporate our medical trivia uh, throughout right? the theme park. <laughs> we get Mark Summers to come to a residency oh, for a weekend. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's another good get right there. He'd be very <laughs> helpful. <laughs> who, who do we got? We got Ken Jump. We got Mark Summers. <laughs> And we've got the entire uh, corporate governance of Johnson & Johnson. It's a recipe made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I almost just ripped off Super Ego and said, we got four of the five surviving members of the Funky Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Super Ego. Super Ego is a great show. Man, that would be a, another good get. Uh, for Because uh, they to... have the lab coats. Yeah, exactly. To contribute mm. some ideas, some sketch comedy. Oh, that's great. That idea of wearing the tooth costume has kind of got me going. Like, it'd be fun to uh, have giant anthropomorphic kind of everything, you know, different body parts, different surgical tools, and you can, and maybe it's it's like there's little obstacle courses or those, you know, supposed Japanese game show, little sketch show things where you have to, like, do mm. some super absurd activity, like, really hard to complete, like um, MXC type stuff, but you have to be wearing the... You know the giant, the, the big, the toe ridiculous costume. outfit. Yeah, yeah. And you I also like the, the idea fumble. of meet and greets. Like, oh, uh, quick, get it, get in line, Tim. We're gonna go take a picture with the pancreas. <laughs> <laughs> it really seems like this would be something on a '90s Nickelodeon episode of one of their shows. Like, <laughs> it seems so so up that early Nickelodeon alley. To me. Yeah, pancreas, Chris, and like, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's good. It's good stuff. Uh, uh, liver Laura. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, S- Scott the Spleen. These are all winning characters. And Thank you. You'll have Thank merchandise. You. you know, there's yes. the whole, the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. There's direct to DVD uh, series that you can only buy at the park. Ooh, now we're talking. 
<laughs> and it can be like it can be like Shakespearean plays, but updated to uh, you know instead of taking place in England, it takes place in your gallbladder. And uh, most of the stories the same. All steampunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, they have video games that are just like a mod of. Um, oh man, what we were talking about earlier? Oh, Bioshock. Mm. But it's like medical edition, where all it, the levels it is are very medical. <laughs> Ish. Yeah, you're right. Already, a lot of syringes do that much. going on. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Kids, there's kids in it. There's you know? kid, you know, kids. That makes a big yeah. giant walking iron lungs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ooh, yeah, that's that's actually maybe a good in of inspiration. The the big daddies could be our little tiny shrunk down uh, surgeons. They also have giant drills for hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Old timey scuba suit type apparatus is on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You look like a Scooby Doo villain. Uh, Scuba Doo? Is that what you said? Co- Scooby Doo. Oh. What's with you? Uh, today on. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, cosmetics. Yeah, that's an important. I feel like there could be a whole cosmetic area. Yeah. You know, the. Um, like the shoot 'em up rides, like mm-hmm. like a uh, Men in Black in Universal or yeah, uh, like Midway your... Mania in yeah, Disney, yeah. Uh, you have to like shoot out the bacterias from the skin pores. Oh wow! So yeah, you're going it's like all over a giant face. Yeah. Oh man, you've got like a, a huge close up of somebody's nose, and you have to smash the blackheads when they start to pop out of the yes. whack a mole. <laughs> it's so gross. The cosmetic <laughs> part is just disgusting to me, but it'd be fun. You could have sort of a paintball ish thing where you're applying makeup to a gigantic person because you're a tiny shrunk down, you know, stylist, and you have various implements of launching makeup super far distances onto this gigantic face. But it's all based on like the color palette, so you have to like send the right color. Yeah, no, you it's a it's a work of art. Yeah, so like if you send like the wrong one, it'll be like, <laughs> and then it'll save your high scores by keeping like who can make the most beautiful makeup on someone's face. Yeah, by yeah being... it's like a paint by numbers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nope, she's too fair for that foundation. Right, you you screwed up there. You picked the wrong color. Disqualified. <laughs> Uh-uh. <laughs> I love those kinds of sound effects. I love when they're overly aggressive. Oh yeah. Like There's... uh I feel like there's a whole brand of chip readers now yes. for your card. That's what I was going to say. When your card yeah. is done, you successfully gave them money. It's like uh, 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 uh. Right. It sounds there's... like you just it fail, you know, you just got didn't get approved for like a credit check or something. It's like <laughs> what did I do wrong? I paid you the money. Gosh. Oh, okay. We're okay here. We're we're cool. We cool. <laughs> We cool, Daryl? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of scary. But Trader Joe's, at least around the holiday season, it makes it makes like a the ones down here in North Carolina, at least, it makes like a sleigh bell sound. It's like super oh my gosh. cute. It's amazing. Oh, That's phenomenal. That was great. So I just left my card in there for like five minutes, and they're like, that sound <laughs> says you're supposed to get out of the store, man. You need you need to leave it, sir. You need to leave it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the uh, ringtone that's too good that you want to listen to it and never pick up your phone. Good point. Good connection. Uh, what if the whole soundtrack of this park is done by like Steve Vai, just like ripping guitar, like crazy <laughs> prog rock? <laughs> That's an interesting get. I'm, I'm okay with it. I was picturing just like really soft, kind of like ambient, Wii menu type music, but you know, <laughs> or like Mike, Mike Oldfield, like new agey, like yeah. synths, just like <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Soundscapes, really. Yeah. <laughs> we have Brian Eno. <laughs> uh-huh. He'd be great. That's uh, some easy listening, for sure. Mm, mm. And it doesn't distract too much from your learning. Right. And it helps to carry forward the themes of medical progress, you know, right. without saying it, which, you know, it's art, and we don't want to just be so explicit with our, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, subtlety. We need we need subtlety in this yeah, part, which uh, I think we I think we've proven that. I agree. Hmm. One of our uh, transportation methods could be well, okay. So first aid kits supposedly hmm. were invented by Johnson and Johnson because medical like uh there weren't doctors that went with those like railway workers who were like building the railroad. So if they got injured, hmm. they're just pretty much screwed. It's like 
you know, we're 100 miles from the next town, so you, you're probably going to die. And so we can't they, take the train because we're building it. Right, exactly. Well, you could, but they're not going to do that for some, you know, Chinese laborer. Come on. Um, which, you know, they helped build the rail- railway system for sure. Um, so instead, <laughs> so they invented first aid kits to, like, send along to these, you know, poor little migrant workers who are building the railways. Um, so it would be kind of fun if one of the, you know, transportation areas to get from, like, the modern to old timey you go along the railway and like kind of deliver first aid supplies or whatever and that kind of gets into one of the other like good things that they do is like kind of disaster relief type things which i don't Mm. know that's maybe too real to put into a theme park but or we could just you can kind of like uh you can dress it up a little bit like you don't need to necessarily be like desolation (laughs) and death is everywhere johnson and johnson paratrooping in (laughs) oh my god it's like a gi joe thing yes that's what i was gonna say is gi joe we need to have a cartoon about this that's like johnson and johnson except those are the two soldiers and uh they're it's like I don't know. It's like Johnny so Quest the, kind of thing. The ride vehicle mm-hmm. is a is a parachute, right? And yep. you're sitting in like a thing, and it, there's like four people to each one, and it goes through the it like goes up, and then like it transitions into the next room, and then drops you into like the next the next yeah. thing where it's like we bring giant boxes of stuff to people in Rwanda, and it's like people unloading stuff in Rwanda, and then it goes up and it takes you to the next one. It's like when Hurricane Katrina happened. Right. No, I think that's really cool, and we could turn this into like a kids cartoon where once they get there and deliver the first aid supplies, then they shrink down to really small and they go like, you know, kill the enemies uh, who are the little disease monsters. And uh, there's yeah. like a there's like a secret agent element to it. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like the fight that you don't see. And it's like, uh, you know, secret agent Johnson and Johnson, black glasses. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. And they've got the whole G.I. Joe squad. And there's like, you know, the the makeup specialists. There's uh, mm. the baby powder guy or the man powder guy. And then uh, the surgeons. Man powder. There's the big daddy guy with the big drill arm who can do your small surgeries. Oh, Please yeah. exit through the gift shop. I'm seeing the whole action figure line now, yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Uh, it, yeah, this is not a direction we thought I planned we'd be going into, but I think it's inter- It's more interesting than I thought as well. We could get into some, uh, we could make some allusions to what, what happened with the third brother, why he wasn't part of the name of the company, because he's like a shadow agent, uh, <laughs> deep undercover, the third Johnson. Did you know there was a third Johnson? <laughs> he was in their early testing with shrinking down, shrinking people down. He was teleported to another dimension to bring medical progress to Dimension X. <laughs> and that's where the Steve Vai connection is. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, so then, yeah, Steve Vai plays the soundtrack to uh, the third Johnson, which is kind of like a Twilight Zone-esque uh, show of the third Johnson exploring. Yeah, a little bit of Star Wars thrown in there, yeah. you know, whatever the kid's like. Right. Wow. He the third Johnson's the head of the department. So we have his whole backstory and then we have like, you know, the the agents of now who now work for him. Yeah. You know, he's on the little like speaker thing and he's like, "Okay, Johnson, 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 and Johnson. <laughs> your assignment today should you choose to accept it." But then there's like his whole backstory of like how he got there and like, you know, going yeah. to Dimension X. Oh yeah, this is yeah, good stuff. Yeah. That's explained in the movie which comes out in between season 1 and season 2. You got to watch it on uh, some streaming platform that nobody has. You know, there's the a Johnson, Johnson and Johnson, Johnson streaming, streaming platform. platform. Yeah. <laughs> you can only watch it in the park and in our hotel. Yeah. yeah. At the, at the, oh, okay, let's get into it. What is the resort like? <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, I know the theme of each room will be somewhat hospital-esque. It's extremely sterile. Um, Everything's very white. Constantly flushing toilets. You don't have a chance of, of getting anything stinky. Bidets out the wazoo. Um <laughs> Or up your wazoo, I guess. Um, yeah, there's a the the shower uh, looks. It looks like a, a baby wipe container. <laughs> Wait, you that's like kind of cool. Open it up. <laughs> well, you could do some really interesting like pop art type of things with just giant size versions of their products, like present mm-hmm. and historical. Yeah, we're getting Jeff Koons in on this. 
Damien Hurst is already signed on. <laughs> hey, that's a good get. Um, <laughs> if you need like a cot because you have, you know, you've got the the two beds for like, you know, the more the bigger people and then you've got like a kid. Mm. So they have like a band-aid uh hammock that they can kind oh, of my... adhere to two walls and Yes. <laughs> I think I think that this episode should be called Johnson and Johnson, a family park, colon, a good get. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of good gets here. I mean, the corporate funding definitely helps. I'm glad we we put a, you know, gave so much to our shareholders over the last 125 years to really giving back now. And now let's us give to the community and right. to our customers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> where are we? I mean, we we this is gold. This is all gold. It, no, it is solid gold. Um, I'm going to edit it down to a tight 20 minutes and it's going to be so good. <laughs> <laughs> to, a um, Steve, to a Steve Vai soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of edgy though. I like, I like that they're so open to, to exploring the kind of darker perspective of what they've done, you know, mm. cause that'll bring yeah, in the teens and get aware. Yeah. Yeah. It is self-aware. It's postmodern, like we said, and that's the best way to appeal to, you know, our customers and our employees and the community. Johnson and Johnson, the edgy corporation. Right, that's what will bring the teenagers in. We'll have uh, all these anthropomorphic medical tools, dabbing and doing all the Fortnite dances, Flossing and <laughs> and then uh, for the younger kids, we've got you know the third Johnson GI Joe style show. We need something for the preschoolers though. Is that the baby baby powder uh, uh, oh, park? The roller, the um, yeah, playground area. Baby powder playground. What about for our streaming platform though? Is there a Teletubbies uh, style show available here somewhere? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> what do we want them to come away with? Like uh, basic uh, hygiene skills? Well, it's mostly to, for me impressing upon you know preschoolers is making sure they recognize the Johnson and Johnson logo. Mm-hmm. And they know to buy anything that they see with that logo. Well, force their parents to buy it, yeah. Right, convince their, yeah. So we need to teach them the value of a dollar and um, any methods of manipulating their parents possible. Yeah, right. So it's like a, uh, so here, here's the here's the elevator pitch. It's a young kid uh, who is, who's, who needs to get a job at a pharmacy and, uh, you know, all the all the hilarity that goes into that, you oh, know, yeah. learning all the different chemical It, it writes chemical itself. Comp- yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> and just the colorful different pills falling across the screen with the Johnson & Johnson logo. Like, I think that could be 10 minutes oh, yeah. of every episode right there. Yeah, and we're, we'll do like a Sesame Street-esque like stop motion where it's like pills uh, moving around and spelling things out. Oh, that's we'll good. We'll sell inflatable, uh, not inflatable, uh, uh, plushy pills. Mm-hmm. That's good. And prescription bottles. <laughs> Uh, there's one other legacy of Johnson and Johnson that I'd really think is important for us to represent here. And that's the Tylenol murders. <laughs> well, no, we're dusting that under the, under the rug. Right. Oh, oh, sorry. Nope. Sorry. Didn't mention that it. Never didn't happened. It. That never happened. Uh, and that is the, uh, gentrification of New Brunswick, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I think that All could right. be an attraction. Let's get into it. <laughs> How are we going to represent this best through a theme park attraction? Oh, uh, <laughs> the gentrification of what was it? New Brunswick, New Jersey. New it's where Brunswick, their New Jersey. Corporate headquarters is. They, you know, the town was had fallen on hard times, and they decided to build this huge new global headquarters in the same town where they, you know, had been operating from. So that's part new of their legacy. Brun- and uh, you know, gentrification is one of those themes that really draws people into a theme park. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> maybe there's just maybe there's just like a little like uh uh <laughs> Legoland esque like miniature of New mm. Brunswick, New Jersey. I like that. Oh, there's like um I don't know, I, I, like old school like they're all somehow you can like push buttons and see New Brunswick, New Jersey, yeah. like through the ages, like on top of itself. Like I was this thinking is like, how it's like Sim City kind of thing. Like it starts out, you know, with this this old disease ridden city and then there's like a bunch of, you know, poverty and tragedy. And you can just replace this building with a big happy new Johnson and Johnson facility and everyone's happy and wealthy and it's mm. just an easy solution.
this went some places. I'm uh I'm happy about this. <laughs> I want to keep developing the GI Joe cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> the tiny little medical professionals. Yeah, getting shrunk. Drop down. in to deliver first aid. They come mm-hmm. in, you know, disguised as common everyday disaster relief workers, but at night they shrink down and put on their capes and <laughs> turn into. Oh, Here's man. the thing: if we actually see this on TV in, like, say, uh, uh, the next three years, like, I don't know if I'd necessarily be bummed that they stole the idea or like flattered. <laughs> I think, I, yeah, I think I'd be pretty stoked about that. Yeah, I like, I like the idea of doing. I don't know, just appealing to every single human on Earth and showing them that Johnson & Johnson can do no wrong and that we've never done any wrong either and that the future is extremely bright because of Johnson & Johnson. Right, yeah. It's it's uh, what jo- Johnson & Johnson has revolutionized, is revolutionizing, and will continue to revolutionize. Right. In cleanliness uh, and uh, surgery. Yeah, sterile, a, a sterile life for a sterile family. To alleviate pain, to elim- yeah, relieving pain and suffering, which again this is, is very turning into like a team rocket, like to <laughs> alleviate pain, to bring about you know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Which that that credo they never really live up to at all. Like I I had that memorized. I'd recite it every time that show was on as a kid. But <laughs> they had bold ideas that they never even took one step towards the team rocket what? at least. You know? I mean, they were all just based on, like, it, everything was just, like, messing with this one kid. Yeah. And their their ideals were so, like, generic and just kind of, I don't know, happy. Like, they're nice things. They're cool ideas, but they don't mean anything. It's just super generic. Yeah, yeah. Well, and they were trying to, like, destabilize the world for, like, uh, I don't know, corporate influence? I wasn't really sure. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, to understand their true goals. Unlike they probably Johnson don't know. What's that? Unlike Johnson and Johnson, exactly. Johnson and Johnson yeah. is extremely straightforward, and we understand their their credo, and it's right over the entrance. Yeah, yeah. and maybe instead of because not everyone can read, we can just have a loudspeaker that just drones that on constantly, and then it plays a Steve Vai song, and then it does it again, <laughs> and then another Steve Vai song, and then a Brian Eno song, and then it does the corporate credo again. Yep, yep, yeah, all of it. This is great. <laughs> but then I also like the idea of doing little, like, jingles, because I'm sure they've had some cute advertisements in the past, you know, being around for 125 years. There's some cute little quaint ads, I'm sure, with little jingles and stuff that we could throw in there on the radio. So one of the uh, – so there's a uh, – in, like, the land of yesteryear, there's, like, an old-fashioned drugstore where, like, you could get, like, a milkshake and stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's, like <laughs> – there, there are the old-fashioned jukeboxes. Right mm-hmm. on the table, but instead of a juke, like it starts off as a jukebox, but it's actually a screen and it plays old ads for Johnson and Johnson stuff. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah, while you're you know sipping on a malt and eating a grilled cheese. Love it. Perfect. Like a Reuben. <laughs> right. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. I just had breakfast and now I'm hungry. Are um, there any other sandwiches that you want to talk about today? Uh, you know, maybe like a BLT. Um, uh-huh. a BLT and avocado for our California guests. There you go. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, on rye, on wheat, on <laughs> white. You know, I mean, we have a variety of breads. No sourdough. That's a little bit too fancy for yeah, this too place. Edgy. But, you know, so we have the uh, in the future area, we have like the cool pill m- meals. Uh, we have this old school drugstore thing. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, soda fountain. Yeah, that's yeah, cute. soda fountain. That's what I was looking for. I know. I was with complete, you. Complete, complete with a soda jerk behind the counter. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I like that idea. And you could do uh, kind of like a cool bar type area because you know there's like tonics and tinctures and all those things that were kind of like old timey medicine, which is basically like a flavored soda. That like yeah. here's it cures what ails you that kind of stuff, dude. We just did I, a theme park based on Johnson and Johnson. Hey, what can I say? Uh, some ideas have merit and some don't, and I'm still not sure where we landed. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I need to have you on again in the future because every episode with you is a a bold step into a a bizarre new era, like uh, that uh you know. 
Scooby Doo episode that I just re aired the last episode was like a big step forward as far as what Amusement Sparks even is. And then we did Tree, which is our first and only totally original IP theme park. And then our first uh, fully corporate theme park. <laughs> I mean, I've done them based on, you know, corporations before, like Nintendo and Capcom and various other things. But like, this yeah, is yeah. about the company first. And mm. it's not based on any kind of pop culture media whatsoever. It's, uh, yeah, pioneering. It, it's what Johnson & Johnson would have wanted, you know? And Johnson. <laughs> and Johnson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo- mostly Johnson. <laughs> but my hope is that, like, to the listener or the viewer, like, hopefully their mind is kind of starting to churn as well, and they had ideas for what could go into a Johnson & Johnson theme park. And I don't know, brainstorming can be such a magical playground, but usually we do it a soul, you know, in your own head when you're driving to work instead of with a friend over the internet. Um, mm. Which I don't know. It's it's good to share these kind of things. I think. Uh, so Nick, where can we find more of you on the internet if we wanted to see more of you? Oof. Okay. Uh, well, I do run the uh, What's with You Scooby Doo podcast, which is on hiatus right now, but um, we'll be back on February. February. Thank you. S- yeah, you're welcome. Uh, sixth. Um. And the concept of the show is that I force people to watch Scooby-Doo and then by talking about the episode that we watch, we typically end up talking about a lot of other things. Um, so you can find that at what's with you, Scooby-Doo.com as well as everywhere else you get podcasts. Uh, also, uh, me and my girlfriend do YouTube videos. You can find us at uh, uh, Adventures with Bree and Nick on YouTube. Hmm. And how do you spell Bree and how do you spell Nick? Bree is B R I E. Nick is N I C. All right. Heck yeah, that's everything that I got. Love it. <laughs> Thank you for your contributions to the internet and our culture in uh, 2019 America. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for allowing me a platform to uh, spew my mind's weirdest uh, uh, inner workings. <laughs> Yes, and most of all, thank you to Johnson & Johnson for keeping us all alive, safe, and sterile for all these 125 years. (laughs) Shout out, JJ. Yeah, I really do appreciate that every surgery I've ever had did not result in death. So thanks, Johnson & Johnson. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. For keeping me clean. Totally. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, You can check out Amusement Sparks on social media. I figure I might as well do one of these, too. I don't know if I've actually done one during the actual recording before, but... Oh, wow. Uh, Amusement Sparks on Instagram and Twitter. It's really boring, but it's there. And then Amusement Sparks on Facebook and Kuyomi on the other place, which is YouTube, which is uh, Mm. the other thing. And AmusementSparks.com, but you probably already knew that. And to everybody who's uh, watching this YouTube feed, um, check it out. Frat Boy Sith Lord. (laughs) (laughs) And I was wearing my, uh, you know, casual Friday corporate cosplay (laughs) over here. Yeah. Casual Friday corporate cosplay. No tie, man. No tie. You see this? <laughs> <laughs>